Hey, what's going on? I'm Ethan, and you're watching This Week at Creek. With guys and girls basketball making playoffs, let's hear from Zach, who has more from Cougar Sports. Varsity softball hit Cy Falls out of the park 13-3. Delaney Moreno took home the win while only giving up four hits and striking out six batters. Madison Swore led all hitters with three hits and two RBIs. Janiah Thomas, Delaney Moreno, Jordan Pino, and Jess Schumann all collected two hits each. Janai started off the hitting streak with an inside the park home run and scored three runs, and Delaney followed up with two triples and three runs. Jordan was up next, scoring two runs and three RBIs. Jess got in on the action, driving in two runs and scored a run, and to finish it off, Madison Battle scored three runs to bring the total to 13. The Lady Cougars played tonight against Jersey Village at home at 6 p.m. Come check them out and see if they strike out the Lady Falcons. The best part is basically playing with my teammates because they're, they're really actually fun and just enjoying the game. Oh, uh, my brother used to play, so I used to play with him when we were younger. We used to play outside and like shoot around when we had a basketball thing outside or whatever. And yeah, I just got inspired by him. I mean, I look at the positive side, like what did I do good? Like what did I do? And what we can work on to get to a point of now. You know? I think I brought the abuse mentality, not that soft. Everybody else, you know. I just think I'm a very strong person. I'm just a beast, you know. The Lady Cougars win nuclear this past Monday, leveling Lamar 91 to 22. The game was over before halftime as the Cougs only gave up nine points in the half, including three points in the second quarter. Rory Harmon was radioactive, reaching 2,000 career points, 500 rebounds, 500 assists, and 500 steals. The girls have been a dominating force all season with a high-powered offense and an equally smothering defense as they have proven they are the most unstoppable team in the nation. Violence is never the answer. Here are some ways to avoid it. If you and another student are getting into a verbal altercation, please avoid any conflict by walking away and not stirring any more negative reactions. If two other students are arguing with each other, get a teacher or AP to help mediate the conflict. Go to the library during lunch. You need to get a pass in the morning from the librarian and put it in your ID, and then you're good to go. Hey, excuse me. Could you put your trash away, please? No, I don't really feel like it. Well, that's not really fair. How would you like it if I left my trash at your house? Let's see how dress code is enforced on campus. Safety is the number one priority at Cypress Creek High School. Dress code plays a huge role in safety. So the whole point of dress code is to not be distracting to others in the learning environment. The boys, if we can see, if you're sagging, we can see your underwear. I mean, we don't want to see that. That's distracting. Um, also, the hoodies and caps and do-rags and all that stuff, um, you can't wear those. And one reason for that is we can't tell who people are on, on video when we're looking to see things that are going on in halls, we can't tell, we can't identify people, and so that's an issue, a safety concern. Most of the time, if we notice someone out of dress code, if they can fix it, they can just go back to class. Um, if they can't fix it or refuse to fix it, then they're gonna sit in DMC until they can fix it. Um, as an art teacher, I believe that students uh, violate dress code because it's a form of self-expression. It's an opportunity to, uh, to be unique, to be different. Um, when I was in school, coloring your hair purple or pink was um, prohibited, but it's also what students like to do today to be self-expressive. I do believe that the dress code affects their behavior. I believe that when you dress 
uh, professionally or you dress well, you feel good about yourself and your end product and what you create, it has a better self-esteem and it's better for you. When students are um, dressing as a distraction, it takes away from the learning environment. Uh, slides during gym would be an inappropriate uh, footwear based on the fact that you could roll your ankle, hurt yourself doing other, under, other endeavors. Uh, the overall dress code for everybody, again, if you're at Google making a million dollars, you'll wear your ID, but it's hard to wear your ID in school. So it doesn't make sense. Backpacks for me is no big deal. First off, most of you don't take, uh, do homework anyway, so you just carry around your stuff. So the simple fact that they're clear, clear, who cares? Confidence and safety are some of the ways dress code can ensure student success. I'm Marcus for Cougar Production. <laughs> smells like something's going on in the Creek Kitchen. Let's go check it out. Hey guys, this is Creek's Kitchen, and today we have... Hi, I'm Sarah Braun. I'm going to help make blueberry pancakes with a blueberry sauce on top today. All right. And we're going to start by um, making our blueberry sauce. So we're going to do, we have just a small container of blueberries. Y'all can do however, however much you want. We're going to do about half the container into the pot. That's half, yeah. Okay. And then we're going to add just a little bit of lemon juice. It helps kind of freshen up the sauce a little bit. Just a little sprinkle works. And then this part is kind of however you want to do it. Um, we're going to start with about four spoonfuls of sugar. You can do however much or little you want. We're probably going to end up adding more later, but for now, this will be a good start. One, we're going to do one tablespoon of cornstarch. Actually, one teaspoon, sorry. Jared, do you want to turn on our hot plate and start I that going? That. What heat? Um, probably medium. Right. We can adjust it later. And then you can put the pot right on it All and right. it'll sit there and heat up. Put the lid down. Yeah. I don't like that that's too. Mm -hmm. okay. Ooh, I um, I'm gonna start on our pancakes. And one thing I like to do is I like to coat my blueberries in a little bit of cornstarch because it helps them not to sink in the batter. So we have one of our bowl, one of our bowls. We're gonna do about half a tablespoon of cornstarch water, or just a little bit, just to help coat. There we go. <laughs> if they start heating up, you can take the lid off and start stirring. But all right. Yeah. So what's this part? This is our blueberries for our pancakes. Helps the blueberries not to sink in the batter, because otherwise you'll end up with plain, plain pancake batter and just blueberries sitting on the bottom. So we're gonna start on the batter. And the batter, I just use a basic pancake batter that you just add water to and you have pancake batter because it's easier to do. Um, you can use your own pancake batter mixture. It, it's not that sensitive. So I'm going to do, I'm trying to get about four pancakes out of this. So I'm thinking about two scoops will be enough, but I just kind of have to eyeball it. So our pan finally got hot enough. So we're going to pour on our... So these are our blueberry pancakes, um, courtesy of Sarah Braun. Um, so we're going to start by putting our sauce on it. Okay. Rock and roll. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty good breakfast. Mm -hmm. And even, I had these for dinner the other day. They're great. I love it. You could even make them for lunch if you wanted to. Honestly, any day, time of the day. All right. Yeah, why, 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 why. Um, so I'm going to finish up. Um, okay. Ready, Olivia? Mm -hmm. You can finish now. So, um, how are we going to really close up? Thank you for watching. This was Creek's Kitchen. That's all for now. I'm Ethan, and thanks for watching. This week at Creek.